More than 400,000 people in San Diego are experiencing food insecurity this year, a number made even worse during the COVID-19 pandemic. When you think about how people are struggling right now, not working, not having money, people are struggling to pay the bills. You can only assume that people are struggling to eat. But these are only some of the ways that people can find themselves food insecure. This is the third episode of Community Connections. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what food insecurity is, what it looks like, and what we can do in our community to address it. While the pandemic spreads through our community, food insecurity is spreading too. Many people who thought they'd never be in this position are finding themselves like this overnight. A question for us today is, how might God expect us to act on food insecurity in our community? What is food insecurity anyways? Feeding America describes food insecurity as a household's inability to provide enough food for every person in the house to live an active and healthy life. Things that can cause food insecurity can be income level, cost of living, debt, inadequate access to a good grocery store, a sudden accident that costs a lot of money to fix, or anything else. Any or all of these can be a reason why someone is experiencing food insecurity. This is why addressing food insecurity is continuously hard to handle. It isn't just caused by one thing that could be easily identifiable. While we could attack each one of these issues on their own, it's harder to address food insecurity as a whole. And we have things like food assistance or CalFresh, but even that can be limiting in who it helps. Only about half of those who are food insecure in San Diego receive food assistance of any kind. This is mostly due to income level requirements that don't take into consideration how high the cost of living is here. Rent is expensive out here. San Diego's not plain. Someone who makes a good amount of money can still experience food insecurity. And these people who fall within the gap are often limited to lower quality and cheap processed foods or whatever they can receive for free through a food pantry. Community fridges like the one in City Heights have tried to address this issue by providing a way for people in their community to get free, fresh, and non-perishable foods right in their neighborhood. One of our values, we're really big on inclusion. Our fridge is open for anybody to grab food. It's for the community, it's community ran. We just wanna make sure people are able to eat, letting them know that we got your back. So um, my name is Brittany Black, Brittany Jones Black, born and raised San Diego, specifically City Heights. I try to be active in the community. I just love helping whenever I'm able to. I'm considered one of the organizers. I met a couple of girls at a protest that I went to, and I think somebody shared a post and was like, oh, we should do one of these in City Heights. Um, we got on Zoom one day and and we kind of just came together and said like, can we make this happen? We planned it out and then we went from there. Uh, we were able to get the fridge, we painted it, and then we found a host, we set it up, but the community is really the trailblazers that made this possible. We are not out here necessarily saying that this one fridge is going to cure all of the food insecurity in City Heights, but it's a start. Another issue is that many people, often black, indigenous, and other people of color, like those in Southeast San Diego, live in food deserts or are limited to where they can get quality food. They're also experiencing food insecurity at disproportionate rates. If you're a person of color, you can work as hard as you want to, but you still are gonna see that you're gonna struggle just because you're simply a person of color. Quality supermarkets often stay away from neighborhoods like this because they see it as something that might hurt their business rather than thinking about the good of the community. You know, City Heights is kind of considered like a low income area. We don't necessarily have like a lot of healthy alternatives. Um, I know we have like a farmer's market and I believe there's like a couple of community gardens, but as far as like stores, you don't see a Sprouts in City Heights. You don't see Trader Joe's. Because of this lack of nutritious foods, these populations see direct health effects like higher rates of hypertension, diabetes, and obesity people that live in areas like City Heights that are more urban, that are more prone to poverty, we struggle with obesity. One of the things that people are donating are like healthy alternatives so that people don't necessarily have to get things like junk food. People in the hood, like we want to be healthy too. Why, you know, why can't we have nice things just because we're in the hood? Like, why can't we have you know, nicer things. People don't necessarily have the money to go to the store and get something. People may not even have transportation to get to something. Lack of transportation is also another issue that people often don't see. In urban areas, public transportation can make it difficult to get to and take home groceries. So even if they can access a better grocery store by bus or trolley, it can become a trip that's several hours long and hard to do. This is an issue that can happen to anybody. 
It crosses all income levels, races, and any other characteristic you can think of. When we see people experiencing it, what would God expect of us? Whether we acknowledge it or not, food is a critical part of the Christian faith. Jesus himself took feeding others as a personal mission of his, often sharing meals with those many people might cast aside. In Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 40, we hear the importance of feeding those who hunger. Through this verse, we're challenged by God to take care of those who might need us. And most importantly, through food. And this makes sense because food is a unique thing that has been connecting people throughout time. We gather around food. We make connections around food. And in a way, we are humans because of food. Food is an essential part of our being and in itself is a human right. God expects us to follow through on this and ensure that we all have access to food, no matter who we are or where we come from. There's no reason why a person should not be able to eat. Eating is a basic human right. Everybody should have access to food. If we're being challenged to feed all of those who hunger, how can we possibly accomplish something so large? We start by looking local at our own communities. Statistics show that you know at least one person who's experiencing food insecurity right now, and you may not even know it. And yes, tackling it can be complicated, but we can alleviate the stress caused by looking for food. One way is to advocate for more expansive and inclusive food assistance. Feeding America's website has tons of information about doing this. We can write to our officials and make sure that we get this done. I would also like meetings held to directly implement change to see those more accessible to our schedules. Not everybody can attend a meeting at 6.30 because people are at work. Another way is to support community-led mutual aids like the City Heights Community Fridge and other fridges around San Diego like it. Not only do they provide the fresh foods that a lot of food insecure people miss out on, but they provide other non-perishables and other necessities like feminine hygiene products. We can bring donations directly to their fridge or go on their Instagram page to volunteer in maintaining the fridge. Having this fridge in City Heights and seeing people, you know, willingly donate food or donate their time. Like, I mean, we have volunteers that come out and they'll, ins you know, inspect the fridge and clean the fridge and let us know like, hey, like we're low on this product or we should probably consider um, getting some of this. And I think it's, it's beautiful too. Like it shows that we are able to make things happen. As long as there's like enough people that are for it, like there's no reason why we can't come together to help tackle an issue that's happening within our community. This maintenance and donations are critical to the fridge staying open. We know we're making a difference in somebody's life. It's, it's good to us. And as always, the Good Neighbor Center is always looking for volunteers. Food pantries are often the only place where people who don't receive food assistance can go to receive free food. And food pantries play an essential role in fighting food insecurity. I would encourage all of us to think about where we can find opportunities to better access to food in Chula Vista. Can we find ways to integrate community fridges or even community gardens? And even if a community, you know, seems like everybody is doing okay, it doesn't hurt to have a community fridge because you people that may not necessarily want to announce or make it known that they're struggling. Um, and at the same time, people shouldn't have to announce that. Lastly, I want to encourage all of you to participate in the project that me and the other interns are working on. We're looking for volunteers from all age groups to help us collect, sort and distribute food with our partner organization, the Good Neighbor Center. The link to sign up is gonna be in the description box below. It's important to remember that a lot of people aren't gonna talk about being food insecure. And the fact that we don't have food available for everyone is a failure on the behalf of society not on the individual. People may feel like a shame to, you know, not have food security in their homes. We don't want people to feel that way because the struggle is real. Society has put so much stigma and shame on admitting that you're experiencing food insecurity. Let's be there for each other and find ways to support those in our community like we're supposed to. I just want to put it out there. Don't let anybody tell you you don't deserve a meal. Don't let anybody tell you that you shouldn't eat today. Oh, you don't have money for it. I guess you can't get it. Don't let anybody do that. You deserve food. You deserve to eat. You deserve to have a full stomach at the end of the day. Don't let anybody take that away from you. Special thanks to Brittany and the City Heights Community Fridge for taking the time to have this conversation with us about food justice. If you like this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and press the notification bell so that way you'll know when the next video comes out. Thank you again for watching this episode of Community Connections. We'll see you next time.